Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey world, how you doing? Uh, my name is Brianna Vitas and this is my first show. And today we're going to be talking about CS for Pono, which is an outreach program which is going to stem um, all across the basis of computer science, but we're mostly working on 3D printing right now. And here to talk with me today about that is the wonderful woman who runs it all, <laughs> Gabriela Artigas, who happens to be my computer science professor. That's Thank right. you for joining me today, Gabby. It's my pleasure. How are you doing, Brie? Good, how are you? Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but it's fine, we'll work through it. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> All right, so let's just jump right into it. Um, tell me about yourself. Well, uh, my name is Gabriela Artigas. I come from Argentina. I came to HPU in 1987 as a student athlete. Hmm. So I play volleyball for the school, and I, I focus on computer science eventually through I went through a different path to get to my major, and then uh, I moved on to do my master's in information systems. And when I graduated, I started teaching right away oh, that's awesome. at HPU. So what, what drew you to computer science? Well, um, my first love has been teaching all my life. So I was trained to be a physical education teacher and then sports happened to bring me to Hawaii Pacific University. And once that I was here, I tried to look for a major that um, would lead me into the future. And when I started, when I started to uh, think about computer science, it made sense because I saw at that time that computers were going to be in every field in the future. So um, mind you, this was 1987. So uh, PCs were just coming mm -hmm. out. Uh, it wasn't what it is today. So um, I had some foresight uh, to imagine what it was going to be in the future. That's awesome. That's really great. There's not a lot of people that can that can do that. Yes, we see the new technology coming in all the time, and we're like, oh, it'll it'll get there eventually. It's it's not. It's very rare to find someone that's like, this is going to be a thing. I want to be the person to help people learn this. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. It's mm -hmm. very honorable. Yeah. I thought that uh, eventually I would be a mom and I wanted to know what my children would be doing and if I didn't jump at that time when I had the opportunity and it was just coming out, and I wouldn't have an idea this day what was going on in any environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like you, you know what's going on in this day and age more than other people do because you know how to code and you're so great with computers? Well, I don't know about everybody else. I can only speak about myself. I know that I have a little bit of confidence and uh, I can take care of things at home by myself. I, I'm not intimidated by a, a big purchase regarding technology or, or and plugging in things or talking to the tech people about uh, what's going on with my internet connection and things like that. So I feel that I can survive better than if I hadn't had my training. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's good. Survival is always important. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did you start learning how to code here at HPU? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Oh. I was scared of turning the computer on when I first started, <laughs> and I was scared that uh, the files will disappear or that I would make the computer burn out and explode when I first started. <laughs> and we had a very small computer lab that had eight PCs, and it was running DOS uh, environment, so we didn't have Windows yet even, and it's the C prompt to copy files and things like that. Wow, that's mm -hmm. so awesome. So you've seen HPU grow from the very beginning up until now, all the technologies that they've brought in and everything. Uh, yeah, I have grown personally together with HPU, I would say. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So what, obviously like the technology has gotten better and we have new things, but what's, what's your the favorite new thing that they've adapted or the thing that stuck out the most? Well, to be honest, uh, when I was going through college, the technology on the desktop computers were not up to par with where my interest was mm -hmm. because I was more interested in what would be graphic design and applications. Yeah. So um, 
I felt a little bit behind in the opportunities that I had with my academics did not match what I wanted to do. But now I enjoy doing it as a hobby. So I enjoy video editing and I don't know, making videos for YouTube or um, playing with Instagram to see what the marketing and Instagram is all about and things like that. Cool. Mm -hmm. So you like to mess around with things a lot, huh? Yeah, I like my gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I that, do. That kind of explains quite a bit about you. Now I know why you enjoy putting the 3D printer together so much. Yeah, um, the 3D printing is uh, blossoming to a good point. Uh, it didn't move as fast as I wanted it to go this semester, but um, I really enjoy working with the high school girls, putting together the printer and planning together. It's our club instead of just my uh, club. So. Uh, that's something very special. Okay. That's awesome. So. <laughs> Do you want to know more about me? Or yes, more about tell me a little bit more about What you. else would you like to know about me? Um, so, I know you, you were a student here, and now mm -hmm. you're obviously a professor here. Yes. And how did, how did that all happen? Did you just love HPU so much that you're like, I don't want to leave, or is it just? Uh, well, like I said, I was always interested in education. So teaching has always been my passion. When I was in elementary or middle school and high school, whenever we had to give an oral presentation, I really enjoyed the whole process. And I was told in my senior year that it didn't matter what subject, but I should teach. And um, that's where my heart is. So when I was uh, going through my path at HPU and Hawaii and trying to find my way through academics and what was I was going to do in my next step when I graduated, uh, I was also working part-time at HPU. So I, I was able to see behind the scenes what the professors were doing to get ready for classes and things like that. I, would, um, I, I was doing photocopying for them and keeping track of the mail and things like that. Um, so, my, so I got to know a little bit behind the scenes what it was like, and it seemed like a good match when I was uh, invited to teach um, during a summer course. Um, I was getting trained to become an academic advisor, and then there were changes in the university, and I wasn't going to be able to stay as an academic advisor, so, uh, I was offered pretty much a teaching job, mm -hmm. and that's when the two passions merge, right? So the teaching and technology. So, okay. mm -hmm. and since I had a really good experience um, as a student and uh, in the transition into living in Hawaii, which is a subject of its own, uh, moving from another country to live in Hawaii and the United States is uh, very special. Um, but as I was going through all that process. I enjoyed it so much, and I had so many people affecting me in a positive way that I wanted to be one of those positive influences in incoming freshmen at HPU. So um, I felt like it was a blessing to be able to stay at HPU and, in a way, to give back to the community that gave me some, uh, gave me so much. So that's why I stayed. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, what's your favorite thing about teaching here then? Why do you Why do you stay? Is what I'm asking. Yeah, I I stay because my favorite thing is the interaction with students in the classroom, and uh, my passion is teaching beginners. So, I I always thought that the first impression that a student has in academics is uh, the most important. It, it can make a difference in making in helping a student stay or go away. So my hope, <laughs> I'm not sure if I uh, successfully do it, but my hope is to be that positive influence in students that they uh, feel encouraged to learn and to stay in academics, mm -hmm. because academics are very important. They are indeed. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned that it was really hard for you to move here from Argentina, how that happened. Uh, it happened by a random coincidence that I ended up in Hawaii. Um, I'm not saying that it was difficult for me, but any time you move to a new place, yeah. you have to go through a whole bunch of adjustments. So uh, when I was uh, little um, and I was playing sports in Argentina, in Argentina we don't have scholarships for um, students. So the, the athlete 
um, has a hard time uh, continuing once that the athlete goes into college because the college professors do not understand the training and the coach doesn't want you to miss any practice for your academics. So the two activities conflict with one another. So when I was about 12, I saw my first uh, um, athletic uh, match on TV, and it was UCLA against another university. And I went and I asked my parents, what is this, a university playing an, against another university? And they explained to me that in the United States, um, student there was this thing called student athletes. So. Um, since that point on, I was always thinking that it would be wonderful if I could uh, combine the two and have a scholarship in the United States. So, but I didn't know it would ever happen. And when I was finishing my training to become a PE teacher in Argentina and I was playing volleyball, and I met a girl from Hawaii that randomly uh, came to play for my team. And we became close friends. I was the only one who spoke English in the team, so it, the, it was the natural uh, fit to uh, practice together, and I was always translating for her and things like that. Um, I'm only 5'3", and volleyball is known as a sport for tall people, and this girl is 5'11", uh, so I thought everybody was tall like her, <laughs> and I was very shy about asking if she thought I could come to Hawaii and play volleyball, and when I started talking with her about it, um, she said, yeah, and when she came to Hawaii, back to Hawaii during the holidays, she talked to the coach for HPU, and they worked out a scholarship for me. And I ended up coming to Hawaii with my younger brother that ended up playing soccer for HPU, and my parents. So it was a family move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh. and uh, I gave up a pretty decent life. Uh, so I left a lot of comfortable, things in my own environment to come to the new adventure, new thing. But it went well, it was wor and it was worth it. <laughs> Hawaii feels like home now. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. So does your family still live here? My parents ended up transitioning back into living in Argentina, and my younger brother lives uh, with his wife and children in North Carolina right now. And he lived in different spots on the mainland. But He's my closest uh, relative, uh, physically and emotionally, but he's there on the East Coast, so it's a little far. Yeah. Does he come down a lot still? Or? Uh, they came over uh, only a couple times since they got, they got, when they got married, they came for their honeymoon, and then a few years ago they came with the children, so the children could see Hawaii too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bianca, like Bianca and Lucas, I feel like I should mention them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give them a quick shout out. Yeah. Hey. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Well, we will take a little break, and okay. then when we come back, we can talk all about the club. Sounds great. All right. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii, with some extraordinary guests, the students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. I could play, so any chance you play at all, you know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah, that's how we do it. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on ThinkTech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. We are back, and now we're going to talk with Gabriela Artigas again about um, CS, with CS for Pono, the outreach mm -hmm. program that she has kind of created. But I know it's kind of a spin-off from some other stuff that you guys had done previously. So how did, how did this whole thing come about? So about a year and a half ago, I was approached by my department chair um, requesting that I started an outreach program uh, for high school uh, students. 
and primarily um, we have uh, the Priory here downtown that is kind of our sister school, and uh, we started primarily for them, but it was open to anyone that wanted to participate. Uh, the goal was to um, bring girls to learn about uh, coding, being that uh, females are underrepresented in the discipline, there are a lot of programs that encourage that. So there is a nationwide program called, called Girls Who Code that um, provide that service, and they uh, provide services online that you can use to, um, to teach programming. So we started with that because it was something that already had a nationwide structure and supposedly it gave you the materials. Uh, now teaching full time as a professor and having this other uh, duty um, was a little bit challenging because as a professor you're used to running the show. Mm -hmm. So you're giving the material and you have the book and you said, okay, this is how I'm going to go about teaching this. And this program, you had to do what they told you to do. And that's not an issue. The issue was the timing in which the material would be um, given to us. Mm -hmm. Because the whole thing is run by um, uh, what is it called? People that uh, do it for free. Uh, volunteers. Volunteers, thank you. So the volunteers are uh, busy on their own, uh, probably, and uh, the material was not popping up at the right time mm -hmm. as we needed it. So that was an additional challenge that provided me a little bit of stress. So I decided to go on my own program because the girls that we had, they were already taking programming in their own school. Oh. So they were pretty sophisticated, so I wanted them to have an experience of coding on their own. They were using a similar prepackaged program at school, so I wanted them to have the experience of coding and running the program in their own computer. Mm -hmm. So we started doing that on the second session. And at the end of uh, in the first session, and then uh, so a year ago is when we started the club, and then last semester, um, we had a shorter session, and by the end, I started to talk to them about 3D printing and ask them if they would be interested, if they would continue to participate if we got involved in 3D printing. And they said yes, that they would like to see it. So I have a, a colleague that um, that is doing that as a hobby, and it's uh, located in a in a place that when you walk by his office, you get to see the 3D printer going. So if you're interested in anything that is visual, you are drawn to it. And, um, and that's how I brought the 3D printer to the classroom and had the first experience with the girls. And they really enjoyed it. And I thought it would be good to, um, to try to provide some kind of service. And that's where the name CS for Pono comes uh, to play a role. So CS for computer science and Pono doing the right thing. So HPU is doing the right thing by uh, bringing girls to the classroom to learn to program. Um, and we as a group, we should do something good for others. So I, uh, I learned about an organization that is called um, Enabling the Future. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they put together people that have the technology to be able to 3D print with people that need uh, prosthesis. So they provide the code, and you use the code. Or 3D printing can be done either by programming or by using graphic design software. So um, they provide both. Uh, styles of 3D um, products, and you can decide which one you want to print, and then you send it to them, and then they can give it to somebody who needs it. So that's, in a nutshell, what the program is about and how it happened. Okay. So some, what were some of your goals for this program? So um, the first goal is to have the experience, mm -hmm. so give the girls the experience of uh, programming for 3D printing and printing something. And we achieved a little bit of that in the first experience. So um, one of the challenges about 3D printing is that it's very time consuming 
to print. Mm -hmm. So if you have a two hour time slot per week with a group of girls, it is really difficult to have the experience of programming and printing on the same session. Uh, so what we did was one session, um, I gave them some pointers, and they're amazing because they're so used to using technology in the classroom that they grab their laptops, they start uh, doing their thing, you give them a little pointer and they, they, they go off with it. Uh, so um, my goal was that they print, they program something similar to um, Scrabble tiles, so they would have like a, a shape, a geometric shape, and a character. And they did variations of that, and then we printed it ahead of time for the, se the second session, and then they, um, but we brought the printer and we printed in the classroom in a lower resolution so they could see the printer going. And if anything fell during the class time, I would already have the trinket that they coded the mm -hmm. previous week for them to take. And they loved it. And uh, we watched some videos about the prosthesis, and they said that they wanted to come back and they wanted to do it. So the next goal was to, um, I was given a grant to purchase uh, a couple of printers. Um, it is more economical to purchase them as a kit. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what you know about. Yeah. And last Friday, we brought one of the kits to the classroom and, uh, and we, we put together part of it. The, the first printer is already uh, ready to go, but I don't have the guts to test it yet. Mm -hmm. um, so for this semester, the goal was to build the 3D printers and make sure that they run and hopefully print our first prosthesis, which is made of two parts. One is the pieces that you print in the 3D printer, made out of plastic, that comes out in a filament that is similar to, um, a, what is that? Hot glue gun. A hot glue mm -hmm. gun. So, but it's, um, it's programmed to print with a certain pattern, right? So the filament comes in and uh, it becomes gooey and it prints in a certain pattern. And um, that's one of the parts of the prosthesis would be all these pieces that you print on the 3D printer. And then the other part will be the hardware that will be the cables and the Velcro so the person can put it together and they could have some kind of like joint in their hand that you build. They have different models for different kinds of uh, characteristics of the arm. Uh, so the goal is to put together one this semester and ship it to the organization. And their claim is that once you ship um, a prosthesis that is put together, if it is following their standards, then you can start a chapter of their organization at your institution. And once you start a chapter of the organization in your institution, you can approach, you can receive people yourself and measure them and um, customize the prosthesis to their individual needs locally. So that's um, a future goal. Okay. It's a little bit ambitious yeah. because uh, similarly to Girls Who Code is run by a lot of volunteers. Mm -hmm. So we have to see how it goes. But that's the goal. Okay. So end goal, like in the long run, what you want to do is have um, people that need prosthetics here in Hawaii come to us and that we would measure them and make it for them? Hopefully, that could be one of the things. While students continue to learn mm -hmm. to program and with a project that is tangible and we're providing service to others. Okay, mm -hmm. that's so cool. I didn't know that we were gonna be able to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so is there, um, when we get accepted to them, what, what's it called, the, the chapter? When we get the chapter, is there anything else like that we get to do with? That? Like, can you explain that a little bit more, what that is? Uh, well, I don't know exactly what uh, the rights and privileges that you gain by creating a chapter other than uh, having the golden star that you are approved by them and having people approach you directly. If you are not a chapter, then the organization needs to put the parties together. So we would build the, hand, the prosthesis for anybody, and they would choose who they send it to. But having a local chapter would allow us to um, serve our local community. 
but I don't know how that's going to run once that it takes place. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, one step at a time, just <laughs> yes, like coding. For sure, one step at a time. Yes. You have to do the ifs before you do the else's. It's, um, oh, so we did start to put together another 3D printer. Okay, first off, this woman is amazing. She, okay, she got the kit and she, I kind of like helped her like open it. We were gonna start putting it together and we just didn't have time. There was like a million pieces like spread out on like a table, like twice this size. And we just looked at her like, wow, where are we gonna start? And then we ran out of time. We just ran out of time, mm -hmm. like going through the manuals and everything. But she, we could see that it was very well organized yes. because as good developers, these uh, people, they uh, send the kid in packages that are very clearly marked. Mm -hmm. And if you have the same mindset, <laughs> you can get into their heads and understand what they were doing. So each package uh, was numbered and for each different part of the printer, you would use that package that is numbered like that. Yes. Yeah. So they make it a little bit easier for you. But I remember we were talking about it and and I don't, I still don't know how you did it all by yourself. I remember, um, well, this past Friday, um, the, the club, we got together and we put together some of the parts of the second printer, but the first one you put together by yourself. Yes. Do you want to talk about that experience with us? Well, um, one of the advantages that I have is that when I was, um, when I grew up with two older brothers, so one is eight years older than me and the other one 11 years older, and both of them studied to be uh, electrical engineers. So I saw them playing with uh, circuits and things and soldering uh, when I was very young, and I was intrigued by that. Mm -hmm. So having this kit, even though I never put my hands on another kit before, and I don't know if I come any more. I want to put my hands on. Um, having seen them inspire me to want to do that sometime in the future. So um, this was just putting pieces together, but it was very time consuming. And considering that this needs to work efficiently to be able to print, you don't want to miss a screw or miss a little piece when you're putting it together. So you don't want to lose anything, you don't want to damage anything. And uh, it's, I was very stressed out. So I did it during spring break when I wasn't teaching or grading or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, the, the most difficult component is where the, the extruder is where the, the fluid comes through. So where, where the extruder goes, there are a whole bunch of little pieces that hold it in place, and then you have to connect it to one of the axles, and because this extruder has to be able to move this way, this way, and this way. So hence the 3D, the X, Y, and Z, right? And uh, that extruder needed a lot of pieces to hold it together into place, and when I was ready to put it in, then the screw would be loose and it wouldn't oh, it wouldn't grab it wouldn't grab and I go what's going on and it turned out that there's this square uh, um, pieces that need to go inside so then the screw would catch so I left that for the next day so after having my coffee in the morning I with patient I backtracked a few steps and got that together and then the other highlight was when all the cables because each each part of the, the printer has its own motor, and each motor needs to be plugged into this sort of motherboard. And you have to be careful how you lay them out so they don't snap when the 3D printer is running. So then you have to plug them in on this motherboard, and that was very stressful. So I had a friend, another computer science teacher, help me with that. And she goes, oh, Gabby, I don't know how you do this. <laughs> I would be very stressed if I had to do this by myself. It's a lot of detail. Yes, it is. And a lot of steps. So is coding. So those two go, kind of go hand in mm -hmm. hand. They're very similar. Procedural. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, we are running out of time, unfortunately. Yes. I thought we had more time. But um, before we do that, I want to um, ask if there's anyone out there that wants to join, how, mm -hmm. how, will they, how would they go about that? We have an email that everybody can write to uh, if they're interested. Uh, GWC, standing for Girls Who Code, even though we're not in that organization anymore, we still have that email because it's an HPU email. So GWC at HPUEDU, and they, I would be the one reading those emails, and you can uh, write asking questions, 
um, asking to join. We normally go by the semester, so the next session will start uh, September, September 5th. So, uh, we normally run it on Fridays, so Friday afternoons, after the high school girls are out of school. And this is, right now it's only for girls, so, and we encourage all girls from public schools, uh, 12 to 17 to join us, even freshmen in college, if they want to participate, they're welcome to come in. Uh, and the more, the merrier. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. All right, well, you heard that. If you want to come join us and play around with a 3D printer, learn how to code, um, create all these cool things and make prosthetics with us, feel free to come on down, email us, um, and then you can have fun with us. Uh, that will be it for today's show. Thank you for joining me. I'm Brianna Vitas, and this has been my wonderful guest, Gabriela Ortiz. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs>